All right, we're gonna build our goat house today. Eleven something. Uh, Seventeen dollars for the thicker foam, and eleven forty-seven for each one of the hard four by eight hard boards. So, uh, and this is just the cheap thin, thin stuff. But we just need something on the inside to keep them from eating the styrofoam. So that's what that's for. We do have corrugated uh, tin metal from uh, some scrap, and we're gonna put that on the outside for, for the for the exterior. All right, so I will show y'all some progress here in a minute. Painted some on this side of the hardboard. This is the water seal that I had left over. It was the same stuff I used on the outside of our chicken house to waterproof it. So I'm putting it on this hardboard stuff that I bought. The hardboard is just gonna keep them from eating the styrofoam. The exterior of the dome will be the corrugated metal like I used on the back of the chicken shed. We've got some more of that from some scrap we picked up. So, so far cost is 50 bucks. So what we end up now is a four by eight sheet of hardboard with the two by two ribs screwed on. There's five to four screws per board holding it on. And I have it to where this part, the smooth part of the hardboard is going to go up to the outside. The corrugated metal will be here, styrofoam will be in between each one. And that smooth side is what I put the Thompsons on, so that way, you know, the waterproofing is facing up towards the outside of the goat house. Inside, it's not... Anyways, every little bit counts, just makes it last that much longer for you. But, uh, there we go. Just uh, making the goat house with the cheapest materials possible to get us through this bad time that we're all having to go through. Okay, so I've got all the styrofoam pieces cut uh, for each section. I took the ones out on the ends because now we're going to take it over to where the pallet is and we're going to be putting screws through here. And so now this is basically what we have now. Uh, we have gone ahead and screwed it in. This one down to the pallet same on the other side it's been screwed down to the pallet okay we'll have to stick our styrofoam back in right before we put the corrugated metal onto the outside uh, this is where we're getting at it's still too wobbly this way and that way and i guarantee you those goats are going to jump on top of this thing so that will all be made sturdy when we put the bracing in and uh, there's going to be a full cut to the front and back and that'll also give it stability left and right. So uh, I'll show you more in just a little bit. That's where we are so far. Everything's coming along well. This is extremely sturdy. It can hold my weight. Two by two construction is not necessarily that cheap. It, it saves on weight and it still gives you enough strength to do something like this. So you gotta remember these goats don't weigh as much as I do even though they'll be jumping on top of here. This is very sturdy and it can hold my weight like I said so uh, I ain't worried about them jumping up there. Um, do kind of worry about the corrugated metal being sharp or something. I have to make sure that nothing can cut them if they decide to get a little crazy. Alright so uh, I'll be back again to show you some more. Okay, so now it's coming together. I cut metal to put on here, and I put the styrofoam in between the hardboard and the metal. There's two by two frame, and that styrofoam is the same thickness as the two by twos. Here's some of it right here. It's also in there. I squirted great stuff in the gaps, great stuff foam in all the gaps, and then I'll just trim that off, and all I have to do is cut two crescent shapes of metal to put at the top and I'll have it overlapping a little bit so the water runs down the outside. It wasn't quite wide enough to, to make it all the way across the top to the next stud so I used self-tapping screws in here to hold it down on the other sheet of metal there. But this side here, these screws are going right into the piece of wood, the, the stud that goes horizontally across the top lengthwise all the way down so here's the front of it you see we got the hardboard on the inside 
and the metal on the outside. And that's basically the type of framing that I built. Just a bunch of two by twos that I cut from old two by fours. There's still a little hole in that back corner that needs to be covered up so no cold air gets in through there. And I need to figure out cutting some vent ventilation holes so that when this is closed up, it doesn't get too stuffy in there for them. But I uh, got the latch yesterday at Walmart. And so that closes up like that at night. Now this is just basically a temporary shelter for these smaller goats. They should be able to use this until spring. This is uh, about the perfect size for two of the small ones. So uh, there's my two girls. They are now in the new area. This will be their new house. They were over in this other area over here with the bigger house. But we just brought Billy. There's Billy right there. And Peanut over from the other property. Here comes Peanut. And Peanut is pregnant. She's got about two more months to go. So she's going to have her baby in the middle of winter. So we will probably have to bottle feed that baby. Uh, because it'll be too cold outside for a newborn. So uh, Billy's happy to be back home, I think, and he has gotten huge. Man, this goat is huge now. I think he's might have a little Kiko in him, from what Tim was saying. Now that he's full grown. You can kind of tell his features. Look at the mane on this guy, and his paws are huge, or hoofs, whatever you call them. But, yep. Sweet Pea and Sugar are his two little girls. Their mama died when she gave birth to them. She got an infection and died. But uh, we bottle fed these two babies and they're spoiled rotten. So now we have them separated from him because you can't crossbreed father and daughter. And that's why we got Peanut over there. We just bought her about four or five months ago, but she's been on the other property keeping Billy company. And Billy is one big goat. Look at the size of these hoofs on this guy. And he's a hefty goat. But we have not fed Billy for, you know, ever since he went over to the other property. He's just been eating leaves and existing that way. No, no sweet feet or anything. But he's going to start getting spoiled again because now he's back home. And we're going to be feeding him sweet feed and stuff over the winter time. So... He's back to the good life. He's got enough area back here to find plenty to forage and uh, he gets the bigger area with peanut. And then next spring we will make another area over that way. We'll close off some more of our land over there. As the girls get bigger, we'll start, you know, rotating the goats around and uh, that way they always have plenty of fresh food to eat. Good to have you home, Billy. Boy, you've gotten big. That's one tough goat. It's almost scary getting in the pen with him because you don't know if he's going to charge you or ram you. Or... He's not like he used to be. He used to be a really sweet, nice goat, but he's got a little bit of mean meanness coming out of him now. He's kind of rough. It came together pretty good. That pallet will last a long time. By the time this thing's ready to fall apart, it'll be time to build a new one. And But I think I'll get at least seven, eight years out of this. So I don't think it's a bad deal. The metal was free. It's just scrap metal. I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, Flex Seal or something or maybe some uh, truck bed liner spray because there are little holes in the metal. Okay, so this is how it is with the styrofoam and the great stuff foam sprayed into all the cracks and crevices. Just thought I'd show this to you before I close it up with that piece that I just cut with the angle grinder. All I did was hold the metal up and trace it 
on that side and then cut it out. And I cut a little bit on the inside of the line to make up for, you know, the marker being on the outside of this. That's Billy and Peanut, King of the Mountain.